It's winter time and it's cold. Habitat projects are probably the furthest thing from your mind. You'd much rather sit next to the fire watching backyard ecology YouTube videos. But I am here to tell you right now is the prime time to get out and look for woody invasive species, mainly because they stay green when most other things are brown and dormant. I'm out here on the farm today. We're gonna to do a little walk around. I'm gonna show you how easy it can be for you to go out and spot these things, find them, and so you can start getting ready for a plan of action against them. We'll start off with this privet bush right behind me. As you can see, it's nice and green. There are several species of invasive privet in the Eastern United States, and they're all very easy to find during the winter time. They stay green for most of the winter, and they often have blueberries on them. They stand out like a sore thumb. All of the privets are gonna be in the genus Ligustrum, and most of them come from Asia or Europe. Let's see what else we can find as we travel down the trail for a short walk. This is just a trail right in the front of our farm. It's an old field that was once a cattle pasture and has been let go fallow for several years. It also has a power line going through it that gets cut on a regular basis. And uh, we don't travel too much farther and we get to another woody invasive, um, calorie pear. A lot of people call these Bradford pears, but in their invasive state, it is the wild form, the calorie pear, Pyrus calariana. And as you can see, it still has green leaves on it, even though everything else out here has turned brown. Very easy to spot very easy to spot and I have gone maybe 20 feet from where that privet bush was and if we turn and go down the trail just a little bit farther maybe 10 feet I see another woody invasive species right here autumn olive um, autumn olive is widespread it was planted um, by a lot of soil conservation agencies and wildlife agencies back in the day as a habitat and soil improvement plant uh, but it is one nasty invasive that just goes everywhere. Uh, the fruits are eaten by a lot of animals. They get dispersed very easily. As you can see, this autumn olive species, Eleagnus umbellata, is still very green while everything else around it is pretty much brown and uh, dormant for the winter. Go on down just past it, and we start to see another invasive species you can see the green leaves there i'm going to come down here just a little bit more it's easier to see it but here we have a whole bunch of japanese honeysuckle this is a woody invasive vine it is evergreen it stays green all season long and then as you can see right there it is climbing up a young uh, it looks like possibly a, a uh, box elder maple right there and it's just covered with Japanese honeysuckle, Lanicera japonica. Uh, very easy to find this time of year. As you can see, there's plenty of it, way too much of it. It has a, a good tendency to take over everything and smother it out. There is a lot of native plants growing in here, a lot of uh, goldenrod. There's a, a box elder maple. I see a lot of seed heads down here from field asters, but they're all being overtaken by this invasive Japanese honeysuckle. Made a slight adjustment and came to a little bit farther down the trail. There was a, a piece there where there's not much of anything growing. And uh, here we have a very young privet coming up right next to a, another calorie pear that's coming up. And as you can see, they are both green. This is kind of a, a road cut that goes through part of the farm. And here we have another vining invasive species. We have English ivy, Hedra helix. This is a, a really bad one. It's hard to get rid of. It tends to root wherever it touches and any little piece left will come back. Um, there's some Hedra helix and there's another invasive burning bush. One of the Euonymuses, Euonymus um, alatus, also known as winged Euonymus it often has wings on the stems it's kind of hard to see in the pictures here with uh, this camera but it is starting and it's young but it's starting to get some quirky um, growths on the stem those will be the wings it turns bright red in the fall and that's why it's called burning bush 
it's actually a lot easier to see a little earlier because it is such a bright red. And as you can see, there's plenty of English ivy along this piece that uh, is starting to take over everything. So that is not a good thing. Uh, like I said, it's one of the harder ones to get rid of. If you enjoy this style of video, please comment below. Let me know what you like about it and what you would like to see more of. I can do little woods walks like this for all kinds of various things. There's another autumn olive coming up right there. Bright green while everything else is brown. You can hear me crunching leaves. Leaves are off of everything else. And there is another one that is growing here. This is the bush honeysuckle. This is going to be a Lonicera species. There are several bush honeysuckles that are invasive in the eastern United States. Uh, if I look on down in this creek bed here, kind of a dry creek bed, there is a whole bunch of privet coming up. And that bush right there with the multiple trunks is actually a very tall privet that has come up right there. It's a big one. Very easy to spot this time of year because it has got green leaves on it while everything else is pretty much dormant. Here's another autumn olive. Autumn olive everywhere out here. Like I said, it tends to spread very badly. Kind of crashed through a thicket. I had to turn the camera off because I needed both hands to uh, get through it. But here is another invasive. It's not too far back up in here, but this is a multifloral rose, Rosa multiflora and it is very green the stems are green on the new growth the leaves are still on it and it has fruits so it's very easy to find this time of year and uh, i think we're up to five or six species of invasive plants and i did not walk maybe 60 yards so invasives are a big deal in the eastern united states any place that's been disturbed has got plenty of them and they tend to take over where you have them and they will climb all over even aggressive native species like this stand of goldenrod right here. It's already got Japanese honeysuckle coming up into it. As we can see right over here, got some Japanese honeysuckle starting to encroach here and that will eventually take over that thicket and it will be pretty much nothing but Japanese honeysuckle. If you love native plants and hate invasive species, smash that like button. I want to go up here just a little bit farther, see if there's anything else I can find. Looks like lots of Japanese honeysuckle. Lots of Japanese honeysuckle. There it is, growing up on top of some saplings and a, a thicket of blackberry. So it has really, really got a hold there. It looks like there might be something back in here. We'll crash through some of this stuff. See what we can find. There's some more multiflora rose growing amongst the Japanese honeysuckle. You can see those smaller leaves down there. It has multiflora rose. There's a lot of non-woody invasives in here too. There's some Johnson grass, microstigium, and fescue for sure. But for the most part, it is woody invasives that we we're gonna look at today. They're a lot easier to find this time of year. I thought I saw, thought I saw another one down here. And it very well may be. Let's see if I can get down here to it through these briars. Yep, and right here we have yet another one. This is Tree of Heaven, Alanthus altissima. Probably one of the worst ones out there. It's not that it stays green all year that makes it easy to find this time of year. Uh, it has huge leaf scars and a very distinctive looking bark and it's easy to spot. And I just happened to look over here and saw it. That is probably the worst one that we're gonna to find today because it is a bear to kill. And if you look off through there, more Japanese honeysuckle, tons of it, tons of it. That was a lot of woody invasive species. There are some native plants that people think are invasive and they really don't like. If you'd like to learn more about those plants, check out this video and get out and explore nature in your backyard.